Hello students, this video is in continuation with the first video that you have seen about fundamental unit of life. In this we will basically concentrate on the structure and function of cell organelles. As already told in the first video that a cell in general has three main parts, the outer covering which was two implant cells, cell wall and cell membrane. Animal cell have just one covering called cell membrane. There is a controlling center called nucleus. And around that controlling center, within the outer covering, there are several structures. Each structure controls a particular function of the cell. They are known as cell organelles. And we also discussed about two types of cell organelles. The first one which has its own chromatin, so therefore does not 100% depend on the nucleus. They control some of their own character uh, functions. They are called semi-autonomous cell organelles. Uh, we have seen there are two only, mitochondria and chloroplast. The other cell organelles, they don't have their own chromatin and they depend wholly on the nucleus for the instruction for their functions. So we will begin with the main semi-autonomous cell organelles. The first one is mitochondria. Mitochondria is a cell organelle which is double membranous. It is surrounded with two membranes. <coughs> The outer membrane is straight but the outer membrane is very smooth as you can see in this diagram. It's an oval shaped cell organ. This is the outer membrane. The inner membrane is folded is folded into finger like projections each finger like projection each one is known as cristae inside the inner membrane there is semi solid substance called as matrix inside the matrix are present those thread like structures as we have talked about the chromatin which is why they behave as semi autonomous cell organelles on the crystal On each crystal there are round bodies attached. They are called as oxisomes. These oxisomes contain an enzyme which is called ATPase. Now what actually happens is, <clears throat> try to understand, the complex food which we eat is digested into simpler particles mainly glucose when you digest all the carbohydrates these are then absorbed absorbed by the villi of small intestine which then passes it to your blood and the blood carries it or transports it to every cell it goes to the cytoplasm goes to the cytoplasm <clears throat> in the cytoplasm 
the glucose is again broken down into a substance called pyruvic acid the glucose that is absorbed in the cells breaks into pyruvic acid and the pyruvic acid then enters in mitochondria this mitochondria they go there and there the pyruvic acid combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide water and gives the most important thing that is energy so energy is produced in mitochondria and this mitochondria produces energy with the help of the glucose that comes to the cells after digestion because mitochondria not only produces this energy after production it stores it also stores it in the form of atp and then stores it for future use whenever and wherever you use and you need energy this energy is supplied because mitochondria produces stores and also supplies the energy because of these three reasons it is also known as the powerhouse of a cell you know powerhouse powerhouse is the term used for the center where energy is produced it is stored and as well as supplied the electric powerhouse that we have energy is produced there stored there and supplied to various areas exactly the same thing is done by mitochondria inside a cell that it helps in the production of energy storage of that energy and supplying it to various body parts wherever you need because it does all those three things exactly like the powerhouse so it is called as powerhouse of a cell the next semi autonomous cell organelle is called chloroplast mitochondria is found in all type of cells plant cell as well as animal cell but chloroplast is found only in plant cells it also has double membrane it is also double membranous but here the same thing outer outer membrane is smooth but the inner membrane inner one is folded into coil like structure which are called as thyla coil each coil like structure is called thyla coil when you draw the chloroplast you draw the outer outer membrane the inner membrane is folded here and there into this coil like structures and these coil like structures they are arranged one above the other this group of thyla each one is called a thyla coil the group of thylakoid is called as grana the each grana is connected to the other one through pipelines and the space between grana this space is called as stroma these are the two main parts of the chloroplast the grana and the stroma the grana is composed of large number of thylakoids as we have discussed each thylakoid on its membrane contains large number of pigments you can show it by dot like structures each of these pigment is nothing but a chlorophyll pigment the whole structure is chloroplast as you know chloroplast is made up of or is composed of large number of chlorophyll pigments now what happens is in the grana the chloroplast absorbs the sunlight and converts the solar energy into chemical energy 
converts the solar energy into chemical energy. It also breaks the water molecules. That is the function of the grana. The water molecules are broken to produce hydrogen ions. Now what happens in the strom? Inside the stoma, CO2 is absorbed, of course absorbed from the atmosphere, from the atmosphere and is combined with the H plus ions produced in the gram and in the presence of the chemical energy. From where the chemical energy comes? The chemical energy also produced in the gram by converting solar energy. And when these things occur, carbon dioxide is reacted with its basal in the presence of chemical energy, it produces to produce glucose. The process is called as photosynthesis. And this is an important function carried out by the organelle chloroplast that it helps in the process of photosynthesis by synthesizing glucose which is a food for the plant and because as it synthesizes the food for the plant it is also called as food factory of the cell it is also called as kitchen of the cell so that is an important function carried out by chloroplast, mind you, only in the plant cell. The next important cell organelle that we are going to study is endoplasmic reticulum. It is inside a cell. Suppose I draw a cell like this. If you observe the cell, right from the cell membrane, you will find hollow tube-like structures. Such hollow tube-like structures, which also go and surround or you can see it helps in the formation of the membrane around the nucleus. This is the nucleus, this is the cytoplasm part of a cell. Nucleus has nucleolus, the chromatin. So they are nothing but hollow tube like structures. Hollow tube like structures present attached to each other, sometimes they are present as such large number of tube-like structures in the cytoplasm. These are simple tube-like structures, if it is like this, it is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Sometimes there are tiny dot-like structures attached to it. These dot-like structures are called ribosomes and when ribosomes are attached with it, it is called as RER, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The functions, if you can study here, of endoplasmic reticulum, because these are hollow tube like structures, the first one, it helps in transport of materials, where the hollow tubes act like a drainage system through which the things can move from one part of the cell to other part. The second is provides strength to the cytoplasm acts as a skeletal structure in the cytoplasm providing strength to, otherwise the cytoplasm is very flexible but the presence of these hollow tube like structures provides certain strength as in our body the bones provide the strength but the most important function of this is you can see the smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps in the formation of lipids and the rough endoplasmic reticulum helps in the formation of proteins and as we have studied the structure of cell membrane the cell membrane is made up of proteins and lipids so both the raw materials required for the cell membrane or nuclear membrane or any membrane the cell membrane nuclear membrane for their synthesis what is needed is lipid and protein 
and both these raw materials are synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum and the endoplasmic reticulum is found attached with the cell membrane also attached with the nuclear membrane so it is believed that the endoplasmic reticulum helps in the formation of membranes of the cell the process is called as membrane membrane biogenesis what is membrane biogenesis it is a process where the cell membrane nuclear membrane or all the membranes required inside the cell is synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum take now the another cell organelle that you are going to study is called golgi apparatus they are also tube like structures but they are not hollow like endoplasmic reticulum they are tube like structures inside which chemicals chemical compounds mostly the enzymes or hormones are synthesized there are tube like structures like this inside the tubes <coughs> there are glue tubes definitely inside the synthesis goes on and when the chemicals increase they they produce a swelling at the ends like this the more chemicals are synthesized the tubes develop swellings at their ends the newly formed tubes are at the top the older tubes are at the bottom so these tubes which are flat tubes are called as cisterna and the swellings at the ends are called as vesicles that is the basic structure of golgi apparatus one thing important that you need to know here is inside the cell the endoplasmic reticulum and the golgi complex or golgi apparatus are closely attached they are very closely attached together in which the endoplasmic reticulum or rather if i say the golgi apparatus synthesizes the chemical compounds and endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes the membrane as we have talked about just now endoplasmic synthesizes the membrane to pack the chemical compounds into vacuoles so you can see because this golgi complex stays in close contact with the endoplasmic reticulum in the cell this is endoplasmic reticulum they work together the chemicals are released by the golgi complex and it the chemicals are formed and around the chemicals this endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes a membrane so that the chemicals are packed in those structures these structures are then called as the vacuoles and this system where the golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum they work together to pack to release the substances and pack them in vacuoles this system is called as a complex cellular membrane system so you need to remember this term newly added term complex cellular membrane system is a system in which two organelles endoplasmic reticulum and golgi apparatus they work together they are attached together and together they help in the formation of vacuoles what is a vacuole vacuole contains chemical compounds inside the, that is enzyme and hormones which are packed by a membrane so the chemical compounds inside are synthesized by golgi and the membrane outside synthesized is by endoplasmic reticulum now just now we have seen that vacuoles are synthesized by the complex cellular membrane system in which the golgi apparatus and endoplasmic work together but that is not the only vacuole found inside the cell 
Vacuoles means sac like structures, bag like structures which holds certain chemical compounds. So in the cell there are large number of vacuoles. You know, vacuoles can be classified as say food vacuoles. These are found in unicellular organisms where the food is taken as for example you have seen amoeba a amoeba is a eukaryotic cell unicellular organism having its own nucleus when it sees food outside what it does it develops finger like projections around the cell, this food like this finger like projection is given and it pulls the food inside by touching those finger like projections around the food and then this membrane is broken and the food goes inside the cytoplasm. So the food is captured inside the cytoplasm but it is done by the finger like projections. So food does not go into the cytoplasm, food goes into a structure that is called as food vacuum. Just now we have seen uh, there are vacuoles with enzymes. We will talk about it in detail also. There is one important vacuole which is loaded with enzyme, also called as lysosomes. Lysosomes are present in almost all the cells. They contain important enzymes and they release the required amount of enzymes to digest the food kill the microorganisms and also to break the damaged part of the cells. So it continuously works for the cell. Inside the cell there are vacuoles called lysosomes which are loaded with enzymes and they keep cleaning the cell. You know? Like when microorganisms enter, they are killed and removed. When there are broken parts, koi cell organ kharaab ho gaya, usko break karke important parts. And when it is broken down, they are converted into simpler particles. Those particles which are useful are absorbed by the cell. Those which are harmful, they are removed out of the cell. So that thing continues. Because it does so, it kills the microorganism, it, it uh, takes care of the damaged parts of the cell. Therefore, they are also called as the sewage disposal system. But sometimes what happens, when there is excess pressure, on the cytoplasm. In those cases, the lysosomes release large amount of enzymes in the cytoplasm. So because the enzymes are very strong enzymes, here you can see, under normal condition, it releases required amount of enzymes. But right now what happened? It releases large amount of enzymes. So what happens? It, the enzymes, they digest and kill the whole cell. The entire cell is killed. And since lysosomes can stay in a living cell and as the cell is killed, lysosomes are also killed because they cannot stay without a cell. So what actually happened? Who killed the cell? The enzymes of lysosome killed the cell. And when cells are killed, then lysosome is itself killed. So it becomes the cause of its own death 
अपने मौत का कारण खुद बनना खुद को मार लेना दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सुसाइड सो नाइसोजोम्स आर आल्सो कॉल्ड एज सुसाइडल बैग्स ऑफ द सेल दीज आर स्पेशल टर्म्स यूज्ड व्हाई दे आर कॉल्ड सुसाइडल बैग्स ऑफ द सेल बिकॉज़ दे बिकम द कॉज ऑफ देयर ओन डेथ हाउ दे बिकम कॉज ऑफ देयर ओन डेथ बिकॉज़ दे किल द सेल देयर एंजाइम्स किल्स द सेल and when cells are killed they are themselves killed they are also called as sewage disposal system because continuously under normal condition they keep cleaning the cell the sewage is generally considered as a waste and waste is disposed of that is why they are called as sewage disposal system now we have talked about certain vacuoles smaller vacuoles present in almost all type of cells but there is a large vacuole large vacuole in the sense covers almost 70% of the cell volume such vacuoles are found only in plant cells if you see a plant cell as discussed earlier even in the first one first part of the video the plant cell have two membranes the outer cell wall and then a cell membrane and inside the cell membrane the entire structure should be called as cytoplasm but then a large portion of the cytoplasm is vacant the cytoplasm is present only in the periphery like this this is the structure of a plant cell where nucleus is also pushed in one corner this empty bag like structure is the large vacuole which we don't find in animal cells it is found only in plants it is surrounded by a strong membrane also called as stomoplast what is the importance of this vacuum why the plant needs this why animals do not have this it is only because at the earlier stage for cellular activity whenever i say cellular activity matlab the activity of the cell goes on where in the cytoplasm by the cell organelles so for cellular activity the raw materials required the water needed immediately in the cell they are all stored in the vacuum the reason behind this is there is no such transport system which supplies the water and raw materials to every cell as we have in animals we will study or you have seen in junior classes that there is a blood transport system the blood flows through your body and supplies materials to every cell so such things are not there so every cell needs a storehouse for it so it acts as acts as a storehouse and then one more thing happens as the cell gets older and due to cellular activities wastes are formed harmful wastes poisonous wastes are formed which can damage the organelles of cytoplasm so they are pushed into these vacuoles so that is the importance of the vacuole it always acts as a storehouse firstly it acts as a storehouse of useful materials supplies them to the cell for the activities but when the activities goes on wastes are formed the wastes are also harmful for the cell so to keep them away from the cytoplasm the vacuole again helps so that is the importance of because the plants do not have a excretory system like us in our cells whenever wastes are formed they are collected by the blood and within period of time they are released out in the form of urine the plants cannot do that so they need to keep the waste away from the cytoplasm and for that they need this large vacuum